I love being a priest. These are words I never in a million years thought I would ever utter, for the record. I love being a priest. I have the opportunity to venture into some of the most beautiful moments of people's lives. They have no idea how to interact with me socially, but as soon as they're away from their family and friends, they'll go through every boundary that they normally have set up and they'll give me every aspect of their life. We could find a middle ground. But here's the thing. I have the opportunity to witness some of the greatest moments in people's lives and some of the worst tragedies as well. And yet in both of these moments, I love being a priest. From the times that I get to stand here before a couple getting ready to enter into that awesome moment that they have no clue what they're getting into that we call marriage, those times of being able to baptize and literally bring the Lord to a little child, to bring this little child before the altar and say, Heavenly Father, this is a new son or daughter of yours. And I get to bear witness to that. To the first communions of the little kids that are like freaked out about what's about to happen. But, white, but me as a priest and as an adult being able to say, you're about to receive the greatest gift you could ever have. To those times in confessions where somebody comes in thinking that the Lord is ready to destroy them. And being able to witness the mercy that the Lord has for them instead. I love being a priest. I love getting to do what I get to do. And I love every day that the Lord called me to it. My friends, how does the Holy Spirit work in your life? How does the Holy Spirit work in your life? If you're anything like me, there are moments where you can be like, man, I really need to call this person. For some reason, it's on my heart. I need to reach out. Or maybe I need to go do this nice thing. And all of a sudden, somebody's life is completely changed, right? I hope you've had some sorts of experiences like that. But if you're anything like me, sometimes the Holy Spirit works just a little different. Sometimes the Holy Spirit comes in the form of a holy punch by a priest. Yes, I've been punched by a priest and I'm finding my next target as well. Early on, and it's 12 years ago now, what I was doing last night is I had a chance to rewatch my, uh, my first mass or I was surrounded by all my priest friends, all my family and friends who came out to celebrate. And I had a priest who vested me and preached my first mass. It was very, very special to me. You see, this is the priest that kind of brought me back into the church from being a wayward young man, thinking I knew better and I had all the answers. I still do, but I know I don't now. But this priest did something very powerful for me. You see, at one point on a retreat where I was helping out a bunch of teenagers, not knowing what I was doing, one of the icebreaker questions, it was really a waste of time, but one of the questions was, you have to find somebody that wants to do exactly what you want to do one day. And this priest decided to seek me out like a heat-seeking missile in front of all of these teenagers and my friends. And he ran up to me and he goes, hey, Evan, what do you want to be when you grow up? I was like, I don't want to talk to you right now. He's like, no, 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 what do you want to be? And he's getting progressively louder and louder. And I was like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to do this right now. And finally, he looks at me and he goes, Evan, man up. And he whack, and he punches me right in the chest. And it wasn't one of these soft little teddy bear punches. And he said, man up, what do you want to be? And I said, with every ounce of courage that I could, very, very lowly under my breath, I want to be a priest. But that was the moment that things started to change for me. One, because I had just been punched by a priest. That broke my brain. <laughs> but it started to change everything from me, for me. Because all of a sudden, there was somebody willing to speak something into my life that I was too afraid to say myself. Now, years later, going into seminary, there were moments of like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. And I didn't know what to do. But you see, following the Holy Spirit, following the Lord in our life, many people come to me, Father, how am I supposed to know what God has planned for me? I want to know. I want to just do His will. It's so easy, right? No. Yes? I wish it was that easy. One day. Maybe for you. For me, it was never that easy. It was never that easy to follow the Lord's will. Lord, do you want me to be a priest or do you not want me to be a priest? Lord, do you want me to be married? Do you not want me to be married? Every time I thought about what the Lord was calling me to, I kept coming up against a wall. 
because I couldn't figure it out. I just wanted to know the plan. I wanted to have all of the little bits and pieces so I could figure out how to nicely organize my life and figure out what the end result was going to be. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound familiar? Yes. Eh, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But I always wanted the plan for, the, for my life. But the Lord never gave me the whole plan. Every time I thought about the priesthood, every time I thought about marriage, it was always this wall. And finally, I had the best piece of advice somebody gave me. Stop trying to find the answer to the end result. Ask the Lord for the next step. Ask the Lord for the next step. Don't worry about what's going to happen. Just ask for the next step. Lord, what do you want me to do next? What is my next immediate step that I need to take in my life? My friends, this is how everything works in the church. Jesus didn't tell the disciples, hey, by the way, you guys are all going to die except John because he's the best. He said, I'm going to send you something. I'm going to send you someone, the advocate. I promise you this, I will not leave you an orphan. I will not leave you alone in the world. I'm going to give you someone. And the Holy Spirit will come upon you and he will teach you what you are to do. He will be the spirit of truth in your life. And if you listen to him, he will show you where you need to go. My friends, the birthplace of the church happens at Pentecost. This moment where Jesus entrusts to these, these his apostles and disciples the future of the church. You are the church and that same promise and same mission is in you. You have the Holy Spirit. What is the next step that the Lord has in store for you? I have, if I were to ask you, are you where you thought you would be when you were a kid? How many of you would say yes to that? Very few. Kids would still say yes because they're still kids. But most of us would say we have no idea how we got to where we did. But if we stay, take a step back and trust in the Lord in the next step, he will ultimately guide us where we need to go. The Holy Spirit is so close to your heart that he knows before you do what is best for you. Now, my friends, one of the best moments of my priesthood happened right after I was ordained. In the cathedral, or in the Holy Vietnamese Martyrs where we were ordained, you get to have this, option, or this opportunity by a priest to vest you in your first va mass vestment. And so this priest that punched me all those years ago in front of all of those teenagers was the first person to put the chasuble on me as a priest and welcome me into the priesthood. Now, what he wasn't ready for in front of God and all of God's people is I punched him back. <laughs> but at this time, I was able to say, I want to be a priest. My friends, the Holy Spirit has a mission for you. It's not always to be a priest, though if he's calling to you that, calling you to that young man, do it. But as husbands, as wives, as spouses, as workers in the vineyard out in the world, he has a mission for you. Don't be afraid of it. With 12 men, the world was changed. From 12, everything was made new. Imagine what he could do with a thousand. Trust the Holy Spirit. Ask him to make himself known and to remove distractions from your life. And you too might be able to speak truth into a world that so desperately needs it.